Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of High Energy Girl. And today's awesome guest is Dr. Peter Kozlowski. He is a functional medicine doctor in Montana. And he wrote a book, hilarious title, called Unfunk Your Gut. You know, because functional medicine, get it? I really enjoyed our conversation about how to help your body when you have gut issues regarding an elimination diet, amongst some other things. So let's go and say hello to Dr. Cause. Hey everyone, welcome to High Energy Girl, a podcast helping women to age stronger because it is never too late to get fit, be strong, and feel sexy. I'm your host, Tracy Gluhige, health coach and personal trainer and founder of highenergygirl.com. Each week we will either have a guest interview which will provide you encouragement or an actionable tip to help you age stronger, or I will do a solo episode. Please also join our awesome Facebook group called High Energy Girls, and I'm looking forward to see you on the inside of that group and hope you enjoy today's show. Guess what, everyone? My book is out. It is a revised and updated edition of a book I wrote five years ago called No Frickin' Way, 21 Days to Ditch the Diet and Lose Weight the Keto Way by Loving Yourself to Health. When I first wrote the original book, I was not a believer in the low carb movement, but after all the years of research I've done, I am sold out for life. In this book, you will learn about all the lies you have been fed, how to engage in loving self-care, how to eat nourishing foods that provide massive energy, why the ketogenic diet is not a fad, how to heal your body through fasting, why you should move your body to get stronger, and how to create an empowering mindset. Start reading now and finally achieve the high energy and positive body image you deserve. Check it out on Kindle, on Amazon. And if you like it, please leave us a review because this will help more people find it. I really want to inspire people to not deprive themselves, but to nourish themselves with loving self-care and amazingly healthy food so that they can age stronger. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed writing it. Hey, Dr. Claus, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Of course, we don't want to get you mixed up with Dr. Oz because you're on a completely different spectrum. At least I hope you are. <laughs> <laughs> My first website, I, it was just Doc Cause, all one word, and everybody called saying like, I want to visit with Dr. Oz. And and so I now put a hyphen in between the doc and the cause to get the confusion out. Totally. I I would have bet that. So for the listeners that don't know you yet, let us know a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm a functional medicine doctor. I, I started as a family practice doctor and kind of randomly just got lucky and got introduced to functional medicine and I've been practicing for, I started training in 10 year for t- uh, 10 years ago. I've been in private practice for seven years. Um, and I work with everybody from like everything from like autistic families to uh, young adults um, with gut issues to ol- older people with autoimmune disease or dementia prevention and kind of everything in between. Um, And the whole point, I mean, I assume your listeners know what functional medicine is, but it's all about getting at the underlying cause. So instead of treating symptoms, we are trying to figure out why those symptoms are happening. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I hope and pray that this is the era we're heading into because clearly the allopathic Western approach isn't working. I would say when it comes to the chronic medicine model, right. With, with acute medical care, yeah. the, you know, they, they are incredible. You break a bone, you have a heart attack. They will put you together and help you live. Um, but what most people are dealing with is chronic disease, right? That mostly is due to our lifestyle and our environment. And the model, in my opinion, is definitely broken for that because it's basically just, 
here, take this medication to feel better. And when you get these side effects from this medicine, take this one for those side effects. And, you know, it, it just, uh, it seems like it's a business of keeping people sick for and alive as long as possible, instead of, you know, figuring out why they're sick and getting them healthy. Mm -hmm. I always say it's because of that pharmaceutical mafia, you know, they need their thousand dollars a pill and, you know, otherwise it's not an effective treatment. I mean, I'm into the whole holistic, you know, realm of things. So, but you know, you can't make money on that. So what about the, what do you find with all this wide range of you know, treat that you're helping people with all these different diseases. Mm -hmm. Is there like a red thread? So to me, in the majority of people that I work with, it starts as trauma when we're children. And trauma, my definition of trauma is trauma is anything less than nurturing. And most people think of trauma as like violence or something like that. Um, Trauma can be as simple as like coming home from school and wanting to show off your homework and your parents are working or they're preoccupied. And then it starts a signal of I'm not good enough. And when we send those kind of signals from our brain to our gut, our gut stops working. And so you inhibit your digestion, you inhibit your probiotics, your microbiome from growing um, you stop the absorption of vitamins and minerals and the gut is the gateway into your body. The gut is arguably the most important organ in your body and it is directly connected to your brain. So it, it sends signals to your brain and your brain sends signals to your gut via something called the vagus nerve, um, which we can talk more about if you want, but so trauma, undiagnosed, untreated, um, followed by, you know, an inhibited gut function, followed by our standard American diet, then you get a dairy sensitivity, you go to the and dairy sensitivity and kids loves to present as like inflammation in the ears, you get diagnosed as having ear infections, you get antibiotics, antibiotics are tablets that were designed to kill bacteria where do we put them in a tube that has five pounds of bacteria in it? Um, and you keep eating the dairy and it, you know, the, the cycle kind of escalates. Um, and then you have like the, the environmental toxins like mold or lead in, in our water, um, in our air, mercury, cesium, thallium, all these things are inflammatory triggers, which, activate this thing called the NF kappa B pathway, which is an inflammatory pathway in your body, which could be great if you're acutely exposed to a virus, really bad if it's actively activated every day over the course of many years. Um, and it ends up presenting as disease. So obviously a lot to unpack there, but, and that's not the story for everybody, but in my practice and what I've seen over the years, um, it usually starts with our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Interesting. So I do want to unpack it all, of course. <laughs> yeah. So would you want to start at the end or at the beginning? <laughs> um, let's start at the beginning, I guess. Okay. So I, okay, I'm 55. Uh -huh. Okay. So when I was a child, I had a traumatic childhood with my father and his abusive mm -hmm. alcoholic BS right? Uh, yeah. So then I go through life and different symptoms of things appear, right? Mm -hmm. So now pretend this is, this is fake, but pretend I'm, you know, 55 and I have an illness. Mm -hmm. um, what do I, I mean, how do I fix the root cause? That was 55 years ago or 50 years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The answer is, is it's not easy. Um, and so there's five main areas that we look in functional medicine and it's food, gut health, hormone imbalances, toxins, and mental, emotional, spiritual health. Out of those five, to me, the mental, emotional, spiritual part's the most important, but that is not why people are coming in to see me. 
They're coming in to do gut testing, SIBO testing, mold testing, heavy metal testing, hormone testing, and, and addressing the physical things. Mm -hmm. So the initial thing I, I try to do is warn and teach people about the gut brain connection. And basically that if they don't make their mental, emotional, spiritual health, kind of the focus of their life, they're not going to improve. Like it doesn't matter what supplements we prescribe, what diets, what testing, you're going to block your body's ability to heal. So one of the things that I recommend is uh, for every, every patient I've ever met, I've recommended to work with a therapist while they're working with me. Um, and things like meditation, prayer, if that's something you choose to do, exercise for me is a huge one. Uh, I do a gratitude list every day with my wife. Um, so these little things that work for like my mental health, uh, I can share, but it's a, it's a combination of, you know, it's not like we're going to eliminate stress from our lives, right? Like we're going to keep getting more and more stressors every day, pretty much. It's just about managing them. Um, so that component, I just like to teach. And, and so the, the, what it is, is. So the, the gut and the brain are connected by what's called your vagus nerve, which is a, a cranial nerve that runs from your brain to your gut, and it sends signals back and forth, right? Your vagus nerve runs on your autonomic nervous system, your automatic nervous system, which can either be in sympathetic response or parasympathetic response. Sympathetic is fight or flight. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. So if I'm uh, here in Montana now and I'm hiking in the mountains and I see a grizzly bear, I, my sympathetic nervous system is activated, right? The blood goes to my brain, to my muscles so I can survive. Mm -hmm. The blood gets shunted away from my gut. We're not going to worry about this morning's breakfast, right? And if I do survive and then I'm sitting by the campfire, I'm in rest and digest. So I'm telling my brain is telling my gut, Hey, let's break down that food that's in there, digest it, get the nutrients out and relax. So nowadays, the majority of people are living as if they're running from a bear 24 seven, we wake up and the first thing we do is check our phone, our email, our text, what, what happened in the uh, breaking news and social media. And we're just right away, like, and we sit down for breakfast and we're answering work emails. And we're just, our brain is telling our gut, hey, don't digest this food. And over time, and then at the same time, that shuts down your microbiome, which allows all these different bacteria and viruses we're being exposed to, to take over, creating dysbiosis, microbiome imbalances, and that sends inflammation into the body. So that's the gut brain connection. So can I ask a question? Yeah. So what you just said about, so for instance, if say I had lunch and then something stressful happened and next thing I know I'm in fight or flight and yep. then that undigested food will become, I'm going to just say like rotten, right? Cause it's not yeah, being processed. Yeah. Right. And then that's when you get the dysbiosis and the issues. But if you eat and then you calmly go about your day then it gets digested and then you can avoid any gut problems from that meal 100 is that what i heard you say okay absolutely yeah to me um that is the most important thing because like i said i mean my, my patients that come to see me are extremely motivated and so getting back to kind of where we what we were talking about like where are we going to start? So stress the importance of the mental, emotional, spiritual part. With me, we're starting with either diet, gut health testing, which we can talk about, hormone testing or toxin testing, or all of them or one of them or two of them. It depends on you know what we think is going on. And so before a patient comes in to see me, they fill out like 40 pages of intake paperwork um, it is your whole medical history from how you were delivered, because that's how your microbiome starts, whether or not you were breastfed, what childhood was like, 
and then everything, you know, all your symptoms, your movement, all your exercise. So we have a pretty detailed history when I meet with someone. So the easiest and simplest thing, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's easy to implement, but in theory it is, is the, the easiest way to start is identifying food sensitivities, which in my experience is best done through an elimination diet. When your body reacts to food, you can have an allergy, you can have celiac disease, or you could have sensitivities, different type of immune response, allergies or IgE antibodies, celiac or IgA antibodies, and sensitivities or IgG antibodies. Allergies and celiac disease are really easy to work with because there's good testing. So if I'm curious, if you're allergic to peanuts, you go and get a blood draw, your blood drawn, and we know reliably, accurately. You also are not going to make it to 10 or 50 years old without knowing that you're allergic to peanuts, right? Unless yeah. you've never been exposed, but otherwise you're, you usually know because it happens right after the food. Right. Celiac, I mean, it takes longer usually in most people to, to start, but once it does, people, if they start paying attention, will notice like, hey, if I have gluten, I start getting gut symptoms or skin symptoms or something like that. Mm -hmm. Also very easy testing, blood testing, biopsy, diagnose celiac disease. And then the, the kind of the third thing is that the regular medical community believes in those conditions, right? They, they have accepted them. They acknowledge them as real. Sensitivities are what we work with in functional medicine. And sensitivities are very, very difficult because the regular medical world doesn't accept them. They are delayed hours to days after eating the food. And there is no reliable testing. There's a lot of IgG food panels out there, but they're not accurate. It's usually just a test of whether or not you have leaky gut. So what food sensitivities are is basically the proteins of like gluten or dairy or soy or corn um, or eggs get through your gut lining into your blood, right? That, that's, that, I guess that's another really, really important and probably the most important thing I try to teach people about their gut is the inside of your gut is actually considered outside of your body. It is a tube that starts with the mouth and ends with the anus. There's openings on both ends. So it works like the skin, right? The gut's job is to decide what it lets into your body and what stays out. And on the other side of this tube is the bloodstream, right? So when things cross that barrier, they're now in your body. Well, we have done, what we've done to our food supply is really bad and and it, it, you know we've genetically modified we've altered our food right so gluten proteins don't look like they used to cows don't like roam around in grass fields anymore their proteins have changed over 90 percent of soy and corn are genetically modified in the u.s all these proteins look different our immune system in some of us is reacting to that right they're they're your immune system's job is to recognize self versus invader and or good versus bad. And, and when food comes in, it's like, okay, this is good. This is nourishing. But with all the th ways we've changed our food, now it looks a little different and the immune system attacks. And now you've got inflammation in the blood, right? And what happens with your blood? It, it goes everywhere from your head to your toes. So I could take a hundred people who have a gluten sensitivity and they all have different symptoms. One person might have headaches. One person might have eczema. One person might have rheumatoid arthritis. That those proteins got into your body through your gut, your immune system attacked and it created inflammation in your blood. So that is, so basically like, Anybody with any kind of chronic issue should do an elimination diet, in my opinion, because just by like trying to pay attention to what you're eating, you'll never know what you're sensitive to, because like I could eat a bagel every day for breakfast and I feel great, but 
I have migraines and I have no clue that it's my breakfast and I'll never know um, unless I do an elimination diet. So that is an, an easy step one for people to start. Um, that's something that I outlined in my book um, and included like 50 something recipes to do that. Um, and 20, oh, so the science behind it, an elimination diet is 21 days with a food by food reintroduction. So every two days you introduce a new food. So on, you avoid all these foods for 21 days. And then on day 22, you start adding them back in. You use a tracking journal that is broken down by system. So when you reintroduce dairy, you might get headaches. When you reintroduce gluten, you might get abdominal pain and you're tracking what happens. It is because IgG antibodies have a half-life of 21 days. Everything in your body has a half-life. And whether you drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes, your hormones, prescription meds, that's why some are dosed once a day, some are four times a day. Um, it's how long it takes us to clear something. IgG antibody, which is what we create against food when we create a sensitivity, have a half-life of about 21 days. And so if I did have that bagel and I react to it, let's say I had it today and I have a hundred antibodies. If I avoid it for 21 days, the immune response, the antibodies cut in half to 50. When I eat it again on day 22, if the immune system recognize it, recognizes it as foreign, it will attack and I'll get symptoms. Hmm. I didn't realize that. Um, so have you ever heard of like a stool food sensitivity test? There's a lot of them out there, but, uh, the majority of them are blood, uh, blood spots. Um, they're not reliable. I mean, the, it, to me, like doing it in the stool, I, I unless I'm missing something, it wouldn't really make sense to me because the IgG antibodies that we're looking for are circulating in your blood. If they're in your stool, that means you're excreting them, which is a good thing. So I don't think a, a stool, I mean, I use stool analysis as one of the most common tools I use for testing someone's gut, but it doesn't tell us anything about food sensitivities. So I did a test with a company, um, and they identify your superfoods, uh -huh. your avoid foods, and your limit foods. So, and then they even customized um, a probiotic tube for me and a pill pack for me. Based Is this on biome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. I, I'm not a huge fan of that test personally. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, I just you know I try everything, right? Right. So. Right. Yeah, no, it's, it's one of the only stool tests that people can order, um, like at home, like you don't need a doctor's prescription for it usually. So you, anybody can order it. Um, those are usually questionable to me, but the, the theory, you know, they tell you what, based on your microbiome, what foods you should be eating and what you should not, et cetera. The best thing we know about your microbiome is the more diverse it is, the healthier it is. So are you going to create any diversity by taking like the same probiotic over and over again? Or are you going to create diversity by like fermenting your own sauerkraut, right? Or um, eating, you're eating some yogurt or something like that. So the way that I look at it, and I know a lot of people have ordered that test, the testing that I use is different. It, there's some similarities with it, but the main things we're looking for is, do you have probiotics growing? But I'm more interested, do you have weeds growing? Do you have dysbiosis? Mm. Um, and at least that's the last time I saw a biome test. That's where it wasn't um, my favorite. Because if your only issue is, is just that you're low in probiotics, well, it, usually to me, the best thing you could do is address that through diet, 
right? So we can create diversity. Um, if you're high in dysbiotic bacteria, then we actually have to kill that and get rid of it. Mm. And so the analogy I really like to think about your microbiome, so you have these three to five pounds of bacteria living in your gut, right? And they live on your, the inside of your large intestine, which is the last part of your gut. And they're hanging out there. They're alive. They need to eat to stay alive. Um, they eat fiber mostly and some sugars and they the ferment. Good, the good guys or the bad guys who eats the fiber? Both. Both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's where, yes, they, they both eat it. And so in this analogy, if you think about it, your microbiome is like your own garden, right? If you, if you have a garden at home, the probiotics are the plants of your garden. Fiber is the fertilizer of your garden. What happens in your garden when you don't take care of it is weeds grow. Or let's <laughs> say you spray it with a bunch of glyphosate, right? That's like the equivalent of taking an antibiotic for your gut. When you do that, weeds can grow, right? And, or the imbalanced plants, flowers, whatever. And that's what happens in our guts. And those are called dysbiotic bacteria. And that could be, that could also be like candida, like a yeast, that could be parasites, all types of different bacteria can grow. And that stuff, those kind of bacteria release toxins right into your blood. And the immune system can have the same response against that stuff as it would to like a genetically modified food. And it, it attacks and creates inflammation, which is now in your blood, right? And again, so then it can go anywhere. So how do you get rid of the bad guys? We typically use natural antibiotics. So an herbal approach is what I would call it. Um, things like berberine, grapefruit seed extract, caprylic acid, most of the supplement companies now make like these proprietary blends, which are like 10 different antimicrobial herbs mixed in one. A crazy and cool thing that the, the stool testing that I use does is they do sensitivity testing, which means that if you have dysbiotic bacteria grow, they then grow that what's growing inside you out and treat it with different herbs in antibiotics to see what kills what's growing inside you. So there, there's people are, have heard about a lot about antibiotic resistance. So you'll get a report back that says like, this bacteria could be killed by amoxicillin, or it could be killed by like Bactrim, or it could be killed by berberine or uva ursi or silver. And so you know how to treat it then, which makes life easy. Wow, that's cool. But if it was amoxicillin, would, would that also kill good ones? Exactly. So I, I try to never use antibiotics um, when I'm treating dysbiosis. And I mean, you can make the same argument that some of your good flora is going to get killed probably by even by the natural herbs. So typically like a regimen when we're, we're treating something like that is herbs three times a day and then like probiotics, prebiotics at night to kind of restore. Mm. But just like your garden at home, if you don't pull the weeds out, you can't just go in and plant more plants, right? Yeah. You have to get the weeds out. So if we need to have a little bit of negative side effect to the microbiome to get that stuff out, we don't really have a choice because otherwise we're never healing your gut anyway. Would you say that most of your patients respond to a particular lifestyle as far as like nutrition goes? Everybody's different. Like, you know, I have patients that are strict, strict keto, right? Or I have patients that are vegan or raw vegan or vegetarian. I've got some carnivore patients now. Um, and every, so the, the diet that has like the most research behind it, as far as being the most effective long-term diet is a Mediterranean diet. 
but one, I mean, one of the things, since I'm such a big, like preacher of mental, emotional, and spiritual health, and this is something I talk a lot about in my book too, is just, I've seen most patients that come in to see me are already on extremely restrictive diets, right? And they've been convinced that they can only eat like five things or 10 things. And <laughs> that that's not good, right? I mean, yeah. and so frequently I'm like encouraging my patients to like expand their diet and, and to eat more things. And they look at me like I'm nuts, but I think that one of the worst things for our body is cortisol, chronic elevation in cortisol, which is our stress hormone, right? And if you're so stressed out about eating this perfect meal, you're going to stop your ability to digest that meal, right? So you're going to lose all the benefits of it anyway. So, you know, candida is a common condition. It's a yeast that overgrows your gut that people, um, there's a lot in the information out there online about you need a strict, strict diet to treat candida. Candida's favorite environment is a suppressed immune system and sugar. That's what cortisol does to you. So the, the restrictive diets go too far, in my opinion, a lot of times. And when we are implementing stricter diets, like they're very short term. Um, there are people that stay on like an autoimmune protocol or something like that for extended periods. But for most people, um, the simplest piece of, I, I like to keep things simple. The simplest piece of dietary advice that I give people is eat nine to 12 servings of vegetables and fruit a day. The average American eats like one to four, right? We call that the standard American diet, the sad diet. Nine to 12 is a lot, right? And in, in, in our traditional diet, it's like we have breakfast sandwich or cereal or Pop-Tarts or pancakes and bacon for breakfast. We have no vegetables and fruit lunch is like a, a deli sandwich or a hot dog or pizza or something, you know, that might have iceberg lettuce on it and a couple tomato slices. Um, and then dinner is like a side of broccoli or something like that. And so when you're eating nine to 12 servings, you need basically like three to four per every meal. When you eat that many fruits and vegetables, you don't have room for the other stuff that we're eating. So it's, you know, again, it, it's, it definitely gets individualized, but I mean, I've had patients that report success from all these different diets and, it, you know, there's, there's usually multiple factors that play a role in that. So it's kind of, I just encourage people to, to find what works for them. And just because like it works for somebody on social media, doesn't mean it's like necessarily right for you. Right. Something you can live with long-term. Yeah. Like I, I was so curious about the carnivore craze. Like, I'm like, wow, people are really decreased inflammation, blah, blah, blah. But I can't eat just meat. It's like gross. I live on a farm. I mean, we grow our own stuff, you know, awesome. it's like, I could never just eat meat. So I was joking. I said, oh, I could be a carnicado, you know, like meat and avocado, but nah, I like salads. <laughs> yeah. So when you say nine to 12 servings to yeah. me, that's like so much food. Like, so can you describe what a serving size actually looks like? Half cup cooked full cup raw is a serving size. If you want to like, keep it simple. It's like the size of your palm even it is like, that's usually we use that with like proteins, but, um, with veggies, it's, it's, that's the, a serving size. That's what it's considered. It can be, um, one of the, like a recipe that we put in my book is the breakfast salad club and having a breakfast, we have a cooked breakfast salad and we have a raw breakfast salad, um, for like 
our traditional American environment that, that sounds like kind of nuts, right? Like who eats salad for breakfast, but it, it's kind of fun and kind of, I mean, it, it's a nutritious way to start the day. What's in it? <laughs> it depends. Yeah, there's, so like the, the cooked one has quinoa and sweet potatoes in it and, and you can mix different veggies. Um, the, the raw one has like walnuts and strawberries in it and spinach. Um, so I, when it comes to cooking, I'm not like a huge recipe person. I, I like to just kind of throw together what I have in the house. You know what I like to do is I make a smoothie and I add greens to it. So I'll either right now I'm not eating spinach because I was told that there was something in spinach that wasn't good for my gut health. So I'm using like romaine or red leaf or some sort of a lettuce as a green. Um, but man, you can throw like two cups of romaine and, you know, put it in a smoothie and you're getting good nutrition from that. Right. Absolutely. I, I have a smoothie, um, six days a week, pretty much. And definitely um, like to throw some greens in there um, to get those vegetables on. And cinnamon? Cinnamon's great to get the metabolism going. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let's talk about your book. Sure. Um, how long ago did you write it? What inspired you? What's your favorite part about it? Um, I So I, we published it um, at the end of May, beginning of June. So it's only been out for a couple months. Um, I wrote it a couple years ago. Um, it took me seven months to write it. And then like a year and a half to edit it, um, with like my editor, but it, what inspired it is I always, I mean, it was a life goal that I had set out was to write a book. Um, and I think that I finally had enough experience and enough stories with patients and enough success with my patients that I felt like I had something good to share. Um, when I wrote it, I wanted it to be different and just, I've read pretty much all of the functional medicine books out there written by my colleagues. I think a lot of times they can be hard to digest. They could be a little too scientific, even for me that, that, has a very science background. So I wanted mine to be more relaxed and kind of easier to understand, but also mixed with the science behind it. Um, so like chapter one, I had a lot of fun writing because it's, it's titled like, have you ever misdiagnosed yourself using the internet? <laughs> and I, I go through just a couple pages of all the, the things that I could con convince myself of when um, I Googled abdominal pain, right? And so that is, and I feel like that, like the first time, like the first person to read it was my wife and I, she had no idea what I was writing. And I remember when she was reading it the first time, she was like laughing out loud. And I was like, oh, this is good. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, I like humor um, and it, so that's important to me. Um, and then it's a lot getting into what is the gut, right? You know, things, the gut anatomy, what is your microbiome? How do you get a microbiome? Um, the most about food. So there's one chapter about the elimination diet. And then there's another chapter just about general food and, and different food groups. And, and, you know, some of the things that we've learned about food. Um, and then the most common condition that I treat is SIBO. Um, that stands for small intestine bacteria overgrowth. And there's, I think, a lot of misinformation out there about SIBO. And it's something I've worked with for a long time with a lot of different patients and just wanted to share my experience with it because every SIBO patient is different and every SIBO recommendation online out there is different. And so people are like, usually like just throw their hands in there. Like, I don't know who to listen to or what to do. So, I mean, I, I know that my way is probably not the only way, but I've had a lot of success treating people with that. So there's a detailed explanation of that. And then, I mean, the big secret that I reveal is that your mental, emotional, spiritual health is the key to your gut health. And 
I talk about how I learned that through my own story, which is addiction recovery. Um, I had issues with alcohol abuse and went to treatment. And that's kind of what opened me up to considering something like functional medicine. Um, and so mental, emotional, spiritual health has been the, the key to my health for a long time. Um, and so I share some of what, like, what worked for me, um, what things people can try if they're not sure if it's an issue for them, and just trying to stress the importance of, of that your gut really won't ever heal if you don't get that under control. Mm. Um, and the last part of it, the recipes that I was mentioning, um, they were written by one of my patients um, who is who has been in remission from rheumatoid arthritis for six years now and is a chef. And so I reached out to her and I was like, hey, would you want to write recipes? And so she did. And then she also ended up like writing like a little blurb of what it was like to come in to see me, what symptoms she had, how she was feeling after leaving the visit, how scared she was of the diet and how she was able to adapt. So it, those are things about it that I wanted it to just be different than your traditional functional medicine book. Um, and yeah, so that, and it's called unfunk your gut and it's funk with a C um, for functional medicine. We, we say at my practice, we put the funk in functional medicine. Um, <laughs> so that's where unfunk came from. That's cool. And now are most of your patients in Montana or are they in all over the country? Um, Chicago and Montana. So my, I started in Chicago and I still have a practice open there. My assistant's still there. Um, and I, occasion a couple times a year I go back there and see patients in my office um now I most I live in Montana full time um and that's kind of I, I think the only blessing that came out of the pandemic for me is that I can live in the mountains like out in nature and still work in a major city um and I had a policy at my practice February of 2020 um, I would never meet, we'd have people that would call and be like, Hey, can we meet on telemedicine? Because I live in St. Louis or I live, um, in Kansas city, or I'm in Detroit. And I always said, no, I was like, if you want to visit, we need, you need to drive here. And so people used to drive and, and, but I just felt like I had no experience using telemedicine and it, uh, it's obviously changed. And now we've got like a year and a half of data that our results are just as good. Like people are still healing. We're still accomplishing our goals. Um, so it's working. But a funny story is I, I was looking back for some reason, I, my first email with my, with my publishing company, um, my publisher, she was in India at the time we were supposed to have our first meeting. So she had emailed me and she was, um, She's like, I'm in India. Can we meet on Zoom? And my response in January or February of 2020 was, I don't know what that is, but I can try to figure it out. <laughs> and then like a month later, it like, you know, became our world. So um, yeah, it's definitely been quite the change, but yeah, most, mostly people, Montana and, and then the Illinois area. Cool. Yeah, I think that, I mean, it's probably way more efficient for you and for your patients and you can get the same stuff done, you know, less overhead and all that. Right. 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 That's cool. And then you can live in some beautiful area. I have a client that used to live in Chicago and they moved out of the city. They said it just was a shit show. Yeah. That's a great way to describe it. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. yeah. Well, I live about an hour South of San Francisco and that city has totally gone downhill. It is disgusting. New York, my son, my oldest son lives in the city in Manhattan. New York is way cleaner than San Francisco. <laughs> Not good. I know. Right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, I love where we live because we have five acres, you know, it's like God's country right here. Yeah, you um, are. Yeah. So I'm really lucky for that. But yeah, I think, and those are some things that are good for your 
mental, emotional, and spiritual health is being out in nature, grounding. I try to go to the beach. I try to go once a week. I don't always make it, but that's my goal to, so I can just walk on the sand and be near that ocean, you know, and getting the sunshine is so important for people. Yeah. I mean, I, I was always a beach person. Like I always chose going to the beach than going to the mountains and I never kind of dreamed that I would live in the mountains but it's just it's different like like Chicago I mean one I mean I I loved Chicago and I still love it I mean it's where I'm from it's beautiful for like the architecture and and just all how all the buildings are different like out here you drive and it's like all the mountains are different and you've got the same kind of like height but it's just natural beauty um so we have like we can be like a few thousand feet into the mountains like within 15 minutes from our house it, it's pretty wild mm-hmm. That's and fun. It, it, it is it's it's really nice to just constantly be able to be outdoors um and yeah as someone that like i know how important my mental health is to me i mean it it's it is healing and it's definitely a benefit because it's not just being outside it's also the physical activity you don't you're not really outside without like moving around pretty significantly mm-hmm. yeah we're right across the street from a mountain range that is a big huge park so i hike and mountain bike my husband mountain bikes like every day oh wow um, nice so yeah, we're really fortunate. Like it's open space. So they can't even build across the street from us. It just has, it's just pasture. So there's just cattle grazing and stuff like that. Um, you, you are living the dream. It's pretty nice. Yeah. But like I tell people, even no matter where they live, find a park or find something outside. And that is where I like to have gratitude. I like looking at the clouds and the way the sun just captures half of it, you know, or just really finding the beauty in God's creation Um, and starting there because maybe your day is sucking, but if you can start at a macro level, or maybe it's this glass of water that this is, oh gosh, it just tastes so good. It's so refreshing. And then gradually it will just start coming in. I mean, do you do like any type of energy talk, like about you know, any energy work, like quantum physics, any type of that stuff? No, that's beyond kind of like my expertise. I'm a big believer in it, but it's not something that like I'm an expert in at all. Well, you're doing the gratitude. That's the beginning of it. You know, that's raising your vibration and making you feel better. And so right there, the whole spiritual component yeah. is all a big piece of it. Cause right now we're in a big shift in our world's energy and really big. I don't know if you follow all the truth or movement and everything that's happening, but we're ready to step into, um, some amazing, amazing time. So in a positive way. Yes. Okay. I'm ready for it. Like bring it on. It is coming. It is coming. It's like a big God thing. I mean, massive. So I'm ready for it. Yeah, we all are. (laughs) We all are. So it's a, it's a cool thing. So, um, how can the listeners receive, get your book? Is it on Amazon? Where can they find it? Yeah. So it's, it's anywhere that you would get a book. Um, there's an ebook version it's on Amazon. It's at Barnes and Noble, your local bookstore is not going to carry it, um, but they are going to be able to order it. Um, if you prefer to use like your local bookstore than Amazon, which I know a lot of people do, and I understand that. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's out there. I mean, I'm pretty sure anywhere across the world you can get it. Um, so very easy to uh, find. Um, unfunk with a C, and. Like my, my website is doc-cause.com, um, doc-koz.com. And I have a link to it on there. That's, that's if- where I was going to suggest is have them go to your website and order it. That's yeah. always the best, I think. Yeah. So there, there's a link on my website. Um, and that's if, if anybody wants to work with me or has questions about 
their gut or toxins. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, and yeah. Cool. Well, I can't wait to look into it. I want to kill off all the bad guys. You should. <laughs> you should. Yeah, the whole idea of elimination diet. I've heard about it, talked about it. I understand it. It's just something I need to commit to doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Dr. Cause. You're adorable and I love what you're doing. And I really hope that, you know, people are inspired to look at their body from a root cause holistic perspective instead of putting a band-aid on a symptom, because that's just going to create more symptoms. Exactly. Yeah. We're totally aligned. <laughs> cool. So thank you. It was great meeting you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, that was awesome. Totally excited to work on my gut health even more. Should I attempt that 21 day elimination diet? Kind of think I should. So anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Please send it to a friend if you know somebody who's having these types of gut health problems. And if you haven't done so already, we'd love it if you'd go over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review so that more people can find the show and heal their body in a holistic fashion. Go out and make it a great day, you guys. Bye for now. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.